Rants, Monologues, and Speeches, RMS, Season 3. Okay. Ready, set, go. To summarize, to summarize the long-ass thing... Oh, God, it's even lower frame rate than it used to be. It's probably because I'm running a scan. Point being, I'm going to summarize that hour-long video in a shorter one right now. Here's why I say you should not, no longer have deaths in Nuzlocke and just run hard modes, coma locks, other challenges, and other shit, okay? So, when you have a Pokemon die in a Nuzlocke, they either stay dead and you use them as a martyr, and you completely erase anything of them being an actual character, or you just remember it, but you don't remember it to a point, or you remember them and keep them alive through continuation fan art and all that stuff that I talked about but here's the thing about that if you keep them alive then all that stuff in the story about any meaning of their death is invalidated because they're not dead they just died they're not dead and then after the run is over it's like well that was all for nothing because they're not dead they're for, they're not dead in the first place but if you martyrize them and have their death have an actual point to it then you're being an asshole because you had a chance to keep someone alive and you didn't you let someone die so either way you're an asshole either way you're an asshole if you let them die for the sake of plot having a point then you're an asshole if you keep them alive but invalidate the plot you're an asshole because you're having people cause pain get pain and suffer through this horrible nuzlocke stuff and their friends aren't even dead. They just think they're dead, which is fucking worse. God, the frame rate is really bad. Point being, either way, you're an asshole. Which means the only way to not not be an asshole, sorry, is to take out the deaths in the whole in the first place. What was that last other point? Um. Yeah. So take out the deaths. Hard mode should be rule one, you can only catch the first encounter in an area. Rule two, if something faints, they are considered disqualified. Which can mean anything you want it to be. Okay? I'm going to do coma locks. Not I'm taking a lock from everything, okay? Coma runs. Where if they faint, then they are set into a coma. No nightmares or any horrible shit like that. Just, they pass out. People pass out a lot of time. Not the worst thing in the world. Sure, they miss out on stuff, but it's not actually painful. Okay? Then, beating the game wakes anyone who's in a coma up. That way, winning the game actually has a fucking point. Wanna know why I'm not beating, uh, fucking, where is it? Wanna know why I'm not beating this game in the Nuzlocke? Wanna know why this Nuzlocke is not going to end in a big battle at the Elite Four? Because my team is not prepared for that. I have a Dedenne. I have a Gastrodon. I have a bulky Ninetales. A Umbreon that... You know, has a negative attached nature or something and only physical moves. It's just, it it would be a massacre. And you want to know what else was a massacre? Maryland's Black 2, Nuzlocke. Wedlock, Pearlock, whatever the fuck. Want to know how that ended? Only two Pokemon survived. And what was the relief that came after? What was the same grace that means that everyone who died, there was a point to all of that? You got to see him walk down some fucking stairs. And he was like, yay, we're done. He was like, oh, we're done. It wasn't like, we did a few guys or something. Just, we're done. And then played an awesome song. But the song didn't, like, directly say that, you know, ones who had died or ones who had lived or something like that. You know, it did have a part where it was mentioning ones who had died, but it was talking about for ones from earlier runs. It talked 
that song talked about Pokemon who had died in the run so far and Pokemon who didn't die until the video was already out and the song had already been created. So it had the die the deceased characters and living characters on the same playing field. It kept them alive by mentioning them and all that, keeping them as a characteristic. Except for the last four where they were just martyrs. That song is really awesome. You should check it out. But here's the point. It would be for nothing. You want to know what happens when you beat a Nuzlocke? Things no longer die. That's your victory. Instead of getting compensated for whatever curse you've had, it just takes away the curse. Like, you've been cursed by a genie or something, and you do all these trials, and the curse gets worse and worse and worse, and then after you're done, the genie's like, okay, you don't have a curse anymore. But I broke all my limbs and everything doing all these challenges, or I was disturbed or something protrubed. This thing is tilting too far up. Uh, whatever the hell, all this stuff that you may have gone through during these trials, Hercules stuff, and then in the end, they're like, continue. No, like, big reward, no compensation, no returning to the way things were, just you're the way you are now. Anyone who died is dead. No Dragon Ball Z shit. Just, you're not gonna have to do it anymore. I mean, unless you start another run. Just a fucking cycle. It has no fucking point. And story is not a point. Just like getting a gun in Australia, getting a gun license, and self-defense isn't a valid reason to have a gun. Okay? Did you know that? I bet you didn't. Stop nuzlocking! Continue hard moaning, continue doing comics and everything, but erase the stereotype that things have to die for your story to mean something. Wanna know what I read last year? The Awakening and Brave New World. You wanna know how the, both of them fucking end? A main character fucking kills himself. For no real defined reason other than the author did it for the fucking publicity and for the fucking emotion that it brings out of people. No sense to the plot. They could have clearly had several under other endings, but they chose suicide just because it was flashier. It's like a fucking Fox channel. Fox News channel, whatever the fuck. Point being, I need people, characters need people to stop the so the stupid, senseless, warlike Nuzlocke suffering and all this other stuff that's in literature and gaming and everything. Stop the stereotype that someone needs to die. Stop the stereotype that someone needs to die. Seriously, people. I want to end up like my friend who... He was so hell-bent on things being realistic that he went and let dozens of characters die that I had worked so fucking hard, Dennis, to keep alive. I had a friend. And we were working on a great universe thing together he made a universe and i pitched in and pitched in my universe to make a double universe to put stuff together and make an awesome fucking storyline that spanned thousands of years and when i got a lot of power in that in the writing format i was like hey let's go back here where is this person he's like that person's dead i'm like i gotta do something so dennis you want to know something that if from the moment you said Sydney was dead, the entire reason I was writing with you and writing that universe was to save people that you would let die. Not for the general coolness of the universe or anything. Every single thing I did with Caitlyn and the deities and the time machine and every not the time machine, the cryo chambers and everything was to keep people alive. And you went and fucked it all up by going back to Shun's world. If you have the power, don't let people die. Don't make shit realistic. Go beyond our shitty fucking world. All this. All this that's happening in whatever country, whatever slum, whatever, whatever. You're authors, writers. You create theoretical worlds with an infinite power. And in the future, you'll be able to actually fucking live in those worlds. And bring people out of them that are just as real as anyone out here.
That's fucking cool. Now, when you bring them out, do you want them to have shitty fucking lives? Or do you want to make them as best as they possibly can? Happy. Sure, maybe someone ends up having a shitty life before you have this revelation. And you don't feel like it's right to go change that. I know that feeling. I'm not going to go back and rewrite Taylor's original plotline just to change her. But want to know what I'm going to do? Whenever I reboot her, I'm going to give her a better storyline every single chance I get. And the original Taylor is going to get a better story later on and have all this stuff, you know. Taylor started off as my only character I had ever had a purposefully depressing story with. Want to know who she is now? One of my most deep, devoted, intellectual, self-aware like, doesn't need me to think for her developed character and mother and just, like, Kizu. I don't think you realize how insane Taylor and Stella were in, in that relationship when she adopted her, adopted her. And then you went and fucked it up by trying to say that that virus should kill Stella and, like, reboot her to, like, hardware or to factory mode? What the fuck, man? They were good. They were going to fucking his if. You had to fuck it up. Not in my not in my canon. You left Alpha and Beta, but I kept them. They're my world now because you fucking abandoned them. And I'm taking the liberty of all those people and I'm keeping them alive. You had to make it normal and reasonable. So you had to make people suffer and shit. I get wanting people to, you know, not live on Cloud9 for their entire life. But not killing people just for the sake of... This kid had thousands of years of war and stuff over how to spell someone's fucking name. Because we couldn't understand why, uh, who didn't who name this original deity who we ended up calling KY. He said, you know what, I don't really have a reason for why this thousand year war thing was going on, but I think that should be the reason. I'm like, I may have agreed with you at the time, but I don't agree with you now. It may have been funny then, but not now. Jesus Christ, man. Don't be like him. If you're a creative writer, write whatever the fuck you want, but also write what your characters would want. Because someday in the future, they're going to be able to walk around without you telling them what to do. Anna, do you really want those characters to be able to come over and punch you in the face or fucking kill you because you told them that killing was a part of daily life? You want to do that to your children or something? Be, be progressive. Grow the fuck up. Stop doing Nuzlocks. Do hard mode runs. Do stories. Do comics. Immerse yourself. But don't let people die just because you think it's what should happen. Come on, people. Think if you were a character. Would you really want someone just writing that shit to be like, and this person dies because I haven't had anyone die recently. What the fuck is your problem if you think that? Your problem is that you were raised in that society. And that you think that that's okay. It's a defense mechanism. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with the way you were raised. And the only thing that could be wrong with you is if you were an intellectual who understood this and still defended it. Then you're an asshole. Otherwise, you guys just haven't realized it yet. I, I was doing Nuzlocke and I let things die. Like, there's no bringing back Mel as hard as I try. I didn't develop her enough before she died. My little Drillbur. Emma, you probably remember her. That Drillbur. Not your fault that she died my fault that she died but I can't make up for it now because I don't have the materials to I can reincarnate her or something but that original Mel is dead because I did Nuzlocke and I was an idiot and now I'm not going to let this shit happen anymore this is supposed to be shorter point being don't be a Kizunami
Not saying it's your fault, you know, way you're raised and everything, but still. Come on. Stop fucking letting characters... Never mind. Point being, the Nuzlocke thing, it goes bigger than you think it goes. It goes into literature. It comes from literature. Change literature. Don't be traditional. Be progressive. Think about characters. They're people. You're going to see that soon enough. Artificial intelligence and all that shit. Okay? You see me in 12 years. <laughs>